folks, this is David Goshaw with David Goshaw Outdoors. I'm here at the Charleston Angler, the Somerville store. I'm here with Michael Farmer, the store manager. We're about to do a seminar on post-spawn bass. Thank you, David, for coming. Looking forward to it. The spawn here on Tanky Cooper is pretty much over. It's, we still got maybe a week or two uh, here and there. Uh, maybe down toward the dam you can catch some. We're going to talk about post-spawn bass. This is when fish leave the bed, where do they go? Several occasions I've been fishing, go to the hatchery or wherever and on a Saturday and you see them or you're catching them in you know, a foot, two foot of water, I mean you're killing them, you know. And you go back next weekend and they're gone. You say, oh God, I, you know, where do they go? And, um, basically all they do, they, they just move out to a little bit deeper water, especially the bigger females. And uh, um, that could be a depression. The depression here is could be three or four foot difference. You know, if it's two foot, it could, a four foot could hold them. You back out, you look for stumps, submerged stumps as you can visually see, or, or trees. Here we got a lot of cypress trees. And uh, what those fish do, they'll, they'll, they'll pretty much migrate out and stay on those trees, individual trees. They'll look for isolated cover, stumps under the water that you can visually see. You, know, you might see a dark spot, you know, and um, the water is uh, generally clear enough here where you can uh, you can see those uh, structures. Anyhow, that's where the bass go. And um, the big females, are, uh, generally the first week or two, uh, pull out on that stuff and, and, and they, they're, they're resting. And that, that's what makes them harder to catch. Uh, you can, and once you get on some of these patterns like I'm, I'm going to teach here tonight, you can duplicate it wherever you go. You can go actually go around the lake and say, you know, look, I've caught them on, on this particular type of tree or stump or grass bed or what have you, and you can, you can do it all over. You, know, you can just take the boat and, and go around and, and, and keep that same pattern going. Um, but anyhow, one of the, uh, the ways to catch these fish when they're, when they're lethargic or, or resting you need a bait that's going to fall down on top of the face. That's going to be real slow and subtle, and uh, and they they they'll still eat. And, uh, and but if you put something in front of them, they will eat it, and it's presented in the right manner. Okay, um, we've got two ways to catch them. You got the slow presentation, and you have a reaction bite. So you have, you've got two ways to do it. I'm going to start out with the reaction bite. This is a Z-Man chatterbait. This is what I throw. Um, in all the tournaments, I, I, I keep it simple. I throw this probably black and blue, probably uh, I'd say 65% of the time, maybe 70. Some lakes, they like green pumpkin better, especially grass lakes. It's kind of match the water with the color. And, uh, uh, and Z Man is actually coming out with a new uh, trailer. For the chatterbait, okay, it comes with a um, just a single. You can see the single little split tail trailer. Now that that'll still work, and you know you catch fish on. But, uh, you just thread this on, um, like you got this. The eyes point back out. You uh, know, you can cast this bait out by a tree. Uh, here we have eelgrass in the lake now. You, you can you can visually see that mainly the dark spots until it gets warm and then it top out. You see the tops of them. Trees, any type of stump, any type of structure. You can get those fish to bite it, and, but there's old saying, put the put the chatter in the chatterbait, and it's kind of a, it's not, some people think it's a joke, but it's real. And, um, and you can throw this bait out there and, uh, and reel it back. And sure, you might get catch one or two, you know, but to really catch those big ones and to get them to bite, <clears throat> you're gonna have to make it work. When I, when I say that, um, if you're fishing trees, cast it past the tree or flip it past the tree or whatever you have it and, and go ahead and, and, and pretty much yo-yo it. Let it sink to the bottom and, and bring it up and let that thing fall right by right beside that tree or stump. And, and lots of times they'll actually hit that thing when it's going down. When it's, you aren't even reeling it. It's, it's coming down in front of their face. Uh, if they don't hit it then, once it hits the bottom, you rip it up. You just, act, you, you just pull it up. It's by the tree. Let it sink down, you, you rip it up. There's roots down there. You can, you, if you don't get right on the tree, don't worry about it. 
but make several casts to it. I mean, don't just cast one time. And you'll you'll feel the the, the structure down there, and just just pull it up, and that that will trigger those big fish to bite. Okay, because it's right there in the face. I mean, you're you're pulling it up, and it's right there, and they'll they'll hit it on re, on reaction. Because one of the big deals here is really big. Is the, the, um, the um, Vancouver Z. It's like Senko. This bait is made out of last tack material, but it's full of salt. I mean, it's loaded and it sinks. You can rig them two ways. You can rig them Texas style, just with a regular, um, regular hook. I use a Damagatsu pretty much on all my stuff. These baits here, I use a, um, a thinner wire hook versus a super line hook. Super line hook is really thick. You know, uh, these are, you can see they're, they're light wired. I'll, I'll use a four aught on these. And uh, you just rig them, take the rig. No, no way. Yeah, you cast them the same type of structure. I just find grass stumps, dark spots, trees. And uh, with this one here, you want to get, you want it, you want to get it, you know, you want to get it near the tree. Like I said, the, these trees here, it's just not the trunk. You've got what they call a donut. You've got roots that go out all the way out. Sometimes they're 10 feet. And they'll, they'll spread out. And, and when those fish come out there to rest, they might not start stay right beside that tree. They might ease off to get in those roots. So you can actually fish around that tree. You know, your first initial cast, of course, is going to be by that tree. You know, you've got shade and, you know, fish the shady side, whatever, fish sunny. That's going to be your target point. But don't just give up one or two calves. Uh, work around it. You'll, you know, uh, lots of times you'll pick up a big fish because she's sitting right there on, on those roots. Uh, this bait here, like I said, the lighter the line the better. Uh, you can get by with 10 or 12 four carbon. You know, but uh, with the way these tournaments, like I said, going out of blacks and they're going everywhere and on the river, uh, they get this time of year they get a lot of pressure. And uh, the lighter the line the better. You have windy days, which unfortunately we have here. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll, uh, I'll put a little sinker on the end of it.